could be said that I have had so far what could be considered a pretty successful life. I completed and survived university twice. Um, I get to spend my days building up children, helping them to develop those early intervention skills that they need for the future. I have a loving family and friends. I'm a model. I achieved the dream of becoming Miss Universe Ireland and walking on that Miss Universe stage. I have the honor of being a chairperson for a fantastic suicide prevention charity. And I have the exact same best friends that I had when I was 10, which may not seem like a lot, but not everyone gets that. It's because of these opportunities and these people that I have the variety of interests in my life. Pageantry, mental health, modeling, the entertainment industry. And all of these, this whole variety of interests have left me open to be seen in so many different ways, in so many perspectives. I'm seen from different perspectives, I'm judged and I'm inspected. Now, I'm a big believer in celebration. I cheerlead, I'll celebrate anything. You made employee of the month, fantastic, I'll buy you a cake. It's your birthday, great, I'll bring the cupcakes. You completed another level in your game, great, where are the balloons? But sadly, not everyone is like that, especially when it comes to those nasty little trolls. And I don't mean the trolls that we heard about growing up as kids, the ones that jump up from under the bridge. They'd be so much more easily handled. I'm talking about the trolls who thrive in the cyber world, who move around the grid like assassins, who entwine themselves in threads and who feed off of your feeds. And we've all heard the motivational quotes over and over again. Block out the haters, ignore the trolls. But it's not always that easy, is it? Sometimes they get in there. They plant the seed that grows into doubt. And if it's left there, it intrudes when we least expect it. Dimming our light, crushing our creativity and putting us in a little box of expectation. And it's not comfortable in there. I know this might sound ridiculous talking about trolls and boxes, but bear with me. I challenge you all to take a second. Take one second to think about a time that you nearly didn't. A time that that little inner voice held you back. It told you, you're not good enough to do that. You'll look ridiculous if you give that a go. Who exactly do you think you are? And I'm gonna let you in a secret. That voice isn't actually yours. It never was. That voice was planted by someone else at some stage, but you captured it, you kept it, and maybe even you complied with it in not taking action. Now, we're not here to play the blame game. I'm not here to shun social media, nor am I here to give audience to the trolls that exist online or offline. They get enough of that. What I am here to do is share a little realization that really helped me to have a bit more freedom to grow. A realization that came from, of all places, Instagram. So one evening I was sitting, scrolling through Instagram, looking at all these aesthetically pleasing versions of the day-to-day -day tasks that we all do. And it happened again. Another one came through. Another message, another comment, another subtle suggestion of something that I should be doing, shouldn't be doing, or I'm not doing. So when this happened, I obviously went to my Instagram page 
and when I got there, it hit me. Each of those little boxes is a version of me. Yes, granted, a more aesthetically pleasing version of me, a nicer background, hiding the clothes that typically lay on the floor, maybe adding a little brightness to those dull Irish winter days. But regardless, still me. Some people know me as Nadia, who thrives off working in mental health, whose life is to work in suicide prevention and do early intervention work. The Nadia who was hopeless and was helpless, who needed a lifeline, and who honestly didn't see a point in tomorrow. The Nadia who now is that girl on the ground, spending every day listening, learning from children, and delivering quick, realistic, and practical support. The Nadia that's always there to listen. To some, I'm Nadia the Beauty Queen. I'm the redhead that strutted her stuff on the Miss Universe stage. The Irish fairy who gave a magical performance. The contestant who didn't let Mario Lopez steal her spotlight or her camera time and went viral for it. All of these personas I'll refer to as boxes because that's what they are. It's a little box of how you're perceived by someone else. And every single one of the boxes is still me. Sometimes, most of the time, a person will only see one of your boxes. That is the one they are most familiar with. That's what they're comfortable with. But whenever you step out of that box or try to jump to another, a little bit of conflict, I'll give you an example. A local newspaper once wrote an article on me and the headline was, Oma native Nadia strutting her stuff on the mission of her stage for mental health. And we all know the point of headlines. They're to pull the reader in, to grab the attention. But that wasn't what grabbed my attention. What grabbed my attention were the two comments immediately below it that said, who does she think she is? What does she even know about mental health? And how can she be taken seriously standing in a bikini all day? Now, how dare I? A girl who is likely just thinking about what shade of lipstick she should wear and what bikini will look best on camera. How dare I talk about an important societal issue on a global platform? Absolute cheek of me. Like if they had read the contents of the article, they might have picked up on the qualifications that I've done over the past decade to make, it, make me able to talk about mental health or maybe even the experience that I have in community work, in suicide prevention, in crisis support. Maybe they would have listened to those and thought, Okay, maybe there's more to her than we thought. Or maybe they would have rejected that because that didn't fit the persona that they had attributed to me. That didn't fit with big haired beauty queen in a glitzy dress. Now I'm not here to complain because it's not just me that this happens to. It happens to all of us every single day, even if you don't realize it. We are all put in boxes every day based on so many different things, on our jobs, our interests, how we look, our gender identity, where we're from, our background. It's a natural re human response. Research has shown that as humans, we attribute traits to other individuals almost automatically. And based on that, we tend to perceive what we expect to perceive. And that perception is rigid. It creates a rigid belief of who I believe you are. That's a very hard thing to break. 
So whenever that belief is challenged, it causes tumultuous relationships, sarcastic remarks, trolling behavior. That is what you're experiencing. Now, people and trolls like it whenever you do something that reaffirms how they view you, reaffirms their perception of you. For instance, the trolls that I spoke about before who commented under that article, they would perceive me having notes as being due to my low level of intellect. Trolls tend to reject it's the truth or the reality or the perspective that doesn't fit their view. And in this case, the truth is, I actually get a hard week. It was just tough. My anxiety was up. I wasn't confident that I could memorize everything. So I thought, I'll bring notes. I'd rather do this well. So although that's the truth of the matter, sometimes that's not accepted by others. So out of these boxes, these boxes that others put us into based on how they perceive us to be and who they perceive us to be, what if we just stop sitting in them? What if we jumped out of the box? Actually scratch that, what if we just destroyed the box? What if we stopped sitting in boxes and jumping between them to please the present audience, to keep the peace, to keep other people comfortable in their perceptions of us? What if we allowed ourselves out of that box to grow? to become someone completely different, another version of us. These preconceived ideas build boxes of expectation for us to live in. And we've lived in them for far too long. We've been limited by them for far too long. Trolls like boxes because they are clean, they are concise, they have clear boundaries. And clear boundaries mean when you step out of the box, you're more easily noticed, judged, pointed out. So let's just forget the boxes. Do yourself a favor in any area of life. Jump out of that box, leave it behind. Grow in whatever direction you're pulled. See what you can achieve. Don't let other people limit the person that you are or the person that you could be. Don't let others define the person that you are or the person that you could become. And don't let society put you in a box and tell you who you are, especially when it's so much more fun outside of those boxes. Make your choice, make your moves, Get that. and grow, because that's your responsibility. Thank you very much for listening.